War with me. Which teacheth my hands to war, my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. I am, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like vanity. His days are as shadow that passes away. Bow, bow thy heavens, O I am, and come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightnings and scatter them and shoot thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand upon, above, rid me, and deliver me out of great waters from the hands of the strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon the psaltery and upon and instruments of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivered David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me, deliver me from the hand of strange children, who mouth speak vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. And that our sons may be as plants grown in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands of our streets, in our streets, and that our oxen may be strong to labor, and that there be no breaking, nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that's, that is in such case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the I Am. All praises to he who possesses all things, even he who is yet to come. Ah, uh, yes, we've just read from... Psalms chapter 144. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray my, from thee, my God. Establish thou me and my seed that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Oh, yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those of you on this platform and, or should I say YouTube? Yes. We thank God for all of you. And we thank God for all that you would share these videos with. Yes, we thank God for them also. But we're here and we're just, we're just, for somehow this thing went out. But with a hand clap of praise, we thank God for those of you. Uh, we thank God for those of you who have just subscribed, and we thank God for your, those of you that who have been with us since the beginning, and we thank God for those of you who have been there after here and there's about, and those of you that are about to subscribe. We thank God for you. Henceforth and forevermore, we thank God for you. Yes, because it's about you. Yes, it's about you. That you might see your God in peace and throughout all eternity be with him yes that's what it's about there's so much going on in the world at this time and so many people being unalived and deceived destroyed and all manner of evil going forth but these things are to be you say why are they to be well, uh, from the beginning, there has been a jealousy happening, not only in heaven, but also on earth. Even as we read in the Psalms, we find out that these people that the Psalmist was talking about were not the people that are jealous and evil of this time. They absolutely were not. They were the same color, the same hue, just of a, just another brother. That's what it is. This is a spirit. This is a spirit. So you're going to have to understand that. This is a spirit that gets upon those 
whom God have, God have allowed his wrath to infiltrate, or should I say possess, to come at you with all jealousy, because you will not turn unto the Most High. Many of you, you stay in your Christianity, you stay in your different, uh, should I say, denominations of the government of the Most High. This commandments, all the holy books you call, you've manipulated them, you've made them to seem as though they're this. This is the jealousy. This is the jealousy and the chastisement of the Most High toward his people. See, we say what it is, we can't put our finger on it. Why are these people doing this? I know why they're doing it. And you look at that jealousy and you look and you and you look at that devil and you sit up there and you say, I'm gonna live what God tells me to live. I'm gonna be what God tells me to be. I'm going to learn and know and I'm going to understand, my God, that I might serve him in all honesty and righteousness, which is his laws, commandments, statutes, and ordinances, even commandments. Yes, these are the things we're looking for. Now, we're in Judges chapter 11. We find out that this is a transitional period where Israel is about to reject the Most High. The book of Judges itself is just giving a historical account of what happened. Why are you so persecuted, black man, or so-called black man, or Israel, or children of Jacob? Saying, why are you so persecuted? Here is where it starts. Before this, after the deliverance from Egypt, after the deliverance and driving out all the, children, all the children of the Canaanites, which were possessing a land that was not theirs. Now here your ancestors come. Here your forefathers come. And they take the land they, they, under Moses. When they were told to go into the land, they were led to the land and conditioned that they might take the land. And then under the most... And O'Shea, uh, whom you know as Joshua, now here they are in the land, taking over different parts of the land and it's being divided among each other. See, the colonizer is doing the same thing. God allowed him put in his, allowed it to be put in his mind to do the same thing over Africa, the United States, Australia, and all these things because idolatry. That first commandment is so important. You shouldn't have nothing in your, you should be so careful and so tedious about having idolatrous things in your home, idolatrous things in your place, wherever you go to avoid and shun idolatry, to hate it with a fervent hate. Trinkets and things that are not right before the Most High. These things you should be, or we should be, very cautious about. And even the mentioning of other devils and other deities of those other nations, even Christianity and Islam, period. They carry these trinkets upon their necks and all these things. It's okay to have a, if you want gold earrings in your ear, it's, it's okay. If you want braids or whatever, if you want to wear pants, it's okay. But listen, woman, what are your intentions? This is what God, this is what, this is what God, I can understand if you have no other clothes and you're poor and you just grow, all growing out your pants or your dress. That's one thing. But when you're doing it to pro, being provocative, you, God will expose the secrets of your heart. Why are he looking at me? There's some of you, are, why, why he's looking, you have your reasons in your heart and this is what God is judging. That's why it's best for you to judge or should I say dress accordingly and modestly. I don't mean you have to look like a, uh, I mean you should dress how you, how you, you know, as far as your financial uh, status allows. But even if your financial status allows you to dress any other way, you should endeavor to dress that way which is neat, clean, and right. Doesn't have to be out there western dress and your hair. Look at your hair. You're putting everything in it to make it look like that which is not. You work with what you got. You got your body. And you work with that. If a man doesn't like it, another woman doesn't like it, so what? It's the attitude you got to take. 
But regardless, now they're trying to be like the heathen. You see other heathen that are dressed up, their hair fixed and lipstick on and everything else. The Israelites saw the Egyptians. They saw the Canaanites worshiping their gods. This is not just something new. But they desire to be like that. You, oh, you love shining your little heathenistic uh, clothing and your rings and your their names upon their items, which you could really buy at a discount store for just, and it looked just as good, but it just don't have their name on it. <laughs> this is how foolish you are. But nevertheless, it's your money. That's right, it is. It's your money. You do with what you want. You love who you love, okay? And you serve who you serve. Idolatries. You kill, steal, and destroy for the monies to buy these things that are really worthless. I can understand food, clothing, and shelter if you're naked. Shelter if you don't have any where to lay your head or keep you from the rain or the snow. You should strive to get those things. And therefore, you either create a business or you work for someone with a business. Yes, that's the way it goes. But manipulating yourself. Now, Judges chapter 11. Now we're into Judges chapter 11. The children of Israel sinned again. They did it back and forth, back and forth. This is the fight in heaven that's going on. This is the fight between idolatry, idolatry and obeying the Most High and deeming Him as one God. Now here we go with Jephthah. Jephthah was the son of an harlot. He was a Gileadite. Now, Gilead had, was the name of a man. Yeah, Gilead. Gilead had Jephthah, but it was apparently, it seemed as though he had Jephthah, excuse me, out of wedlock with a woman of the night, or whom we would call a harlot. Some call her a, a whore. Some call her this and that, you know, a prostitute. This is what he had a baby by. But apparently it looked like the G Gilead took care of his son Jephthah. Even when he married another woman, he took care of his son Jephthah, which is good. Man, you take care of your son. You take care of your son. And, and Teresa, the same thing I say. You do what you have to do until your son gets of age. Then you have your son to yourself. Yes, she's manipulating you. Yes, she's getting more than what she deserves. But the fact is, is that, and they're manipulating the whole situation too. You have to realize we live in a capitalistic society, period. Do what you have to do until it's over with. Because they're not going to relent because they see dollars, period. And this is what's going to happen. But you, you do what you have to do. My advice to you is just, you know, stay with, cap yourself right where you are. See, they know what they're doing. They don't care. As far as you're concerned, you can die. As far as they're concerned, you can die, should I say. They don't care. They just want the money. For whatever time being and for whatever length of time they can spend it and live lavishly off of it, they just want the money. But when all the party is over, you still have you and you still have what you have left. And they can't get that after it's all over with. And number two, keep your pants Keep your pan zipper closed, please, <laughs> respectfully. But anyway, it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon, we, we ended in verse 3, Jephthah fled from his brethren because they said, well, you're not one of us. You're a woman of a harlot. And in other words, this is what you call self-righteousness in a way. Instead of seeing that this is one of our father's children, we should love him and keep him and you know, bless him and do whatever we have to do for him. It wasn't his fault that what happened happened, but this is the way they treated him. Now, this is where he was lifted up by the Most High. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war with, against Israel. And it was so when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went forth to fest Jephthah out of the land of Tob. That's because Jephthah had practiced himself to be a warrior. One who would war and who knows war. This is why you man should understand not only the weaponry of war, but you should also understand the tactics of war. Not only psychological insertion and all these things. And just keep quiet about it. Just enjoy it. 
because this is the way the world is built up because the watchers have taught men these things that they shouldn't be. Now, you can understand what comprises of war, greed, jealousy, uh, all kind of lies and deceit, but all of it is for food and women, period. <laughs> to, get, to get put, bring it down to plain things and color, trying to preserve your seed. <laughs> Fear. War consists of a lot of these things. I can't name them in any other order, but the fact is it consists so much too, for, depending on each situation, war consists of these things. And only the other part is the opposition of the ones who are aggressing is the one who pos they defend because the aggressor wants what the defender has. Or the defender has taken what the aggressor, what they had stole from the aggressor. So war has so many parameters. How did he teach men war? Okay. Now, and verse 7, Jephthah said, we're in Judges chapter 11, verse 7, And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did ye not hate me and expel me out of my father's house? Why are you come to me now when you are in distress? In other words, you, you, you didn't like me, but you found out I was, I was one who real, who's well versed in war. I understood war. I understood how warfare works. But now here you are coming to me because you are being in distress. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Where therefore we turn to thee again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the I am deliver them before me, shall I be your head? In other words, am I going to be your king? Now, these are the times where kings are trying to get into, into Israel. When God is their king. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The I am be witness between us, if we do not sow according to thy words. In other words, we're going to make you king. It's in his heart, I want to lead you. I want to be the big cheese. I want to call the shots. Don't work like that. It's I want to serve you. I want to, I want to make sure you have what you need. And the defense, the infrastructure, all these things that you need and that we can be one peaceful people. But peace, in this day and time, you have to have the weapons of war to even have peace. And Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captive over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the I am in Mizpah. Now he knew God too. He knew the Most High. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from Arnon, even unto Jabbok and unto Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those these lands peacefully. But they did not know, the children of Ammon did not know the thing about their forefather, Canaan. And that God had willed that that land should, become, that should come back to Shem. It was the land allotted to Shem. Much of that land in that area is allotted to Shem, if not all. And said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah. And Jephthah sent messages again unto the king of the children of Ammon, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent, and Israel abode in Kadesh. And when they went along through the wilderness and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sion, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass 
we pray thee through thy land into my place. But Sion, I was king of the Abrites, trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sion gathered all his people together and pitched in Jaz and fought against Israel. And the I am God of Israel delivered Sion and all his people into the land of Israel, and they smote him. So Israel possessed the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country, and they possessed all the coasts of the Amorites, for Anon, even Jabbok, unto Jabbok, and the wilderness, even unto Jordan. So now the I am God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Now he's asking, he's asking, a, he telling, giving him a reason why. This is long, but it's a reason why God did this. But there's the bigger picture, Canaan. His father, his, his forefather. If you would read in the book of Japheth or Jubilees, it's written in there that these things were so. Now, would thou possess that which Shemosh, thy God, give thee to possess? In other words, your God... This is the one, this is one of the devils that God has said, hey, you draw these people away from me, away from me. I'm concentrating on Jerusalem. I'm, I'm concentrating on Judah, the children of Jacob. Because it was not for the children of Jacob's sake. It was for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that God has allowed them to inherit what he promised them. It's not by their righteousness or anything. Now, let's cause this again. So whomsoever the I am our God shall drive out from before us, them we will possess. <laughs> and now thou art, art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab? This is the one they called Balaam. Balaam, he called Balaam to curse the children of Israel, but Balaam was a soothsayer. So God talked to Balaam. Balaam was one who, was, who had the gift of talking to spirits or devils or hearing what the spirits had to say. Not God, the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of God talked to him. Or a spirit from God talked to him and conversed with him and told him, you will not curse my people. No, you're not going to do that. So again, verse 26, he says, Now, while Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns in, in Aor and her towns all in the city that be along the coast of Arnon 300 years, why therefore did ye re recover them within the, that time? Therefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou hast done me wrong to war against me. The I am the judge be judge this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. Yes, when then the spirit of the I am came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed and passed over Mizpah and Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the I am, and said, If thou shalt withal fail to deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, then I will be, I will return in peace from the children of Ammon, and surely, surely, be the I am's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Oh, he made a grave mistake here. But even so. So Jephthah passed over in verse 32 unto the children of Ammon to fight against him, and the I am delivered them into his hands. Yes, he did. I mean, because this is what, what Jephthah said unto the king was true. In verse 34, he says, uh, 33, and he smoked from Aor even unto Menith, even 20 cities, unto the plain of the vineyard with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with trembles and with dances, and she was his only child. Oh. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her 
that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto thee I am and cannot go back. It's better to not make a vow than to make one. Whether you break it or not, you're going to be accountable for it. Now, either way for good or evil. Now, he said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the I am, do me according to that which he hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the I am has taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even the children of Ammon. And he said unto her, her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I might go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity and I and my fellows. In other words, she wanted a child. She wanted to be married. This is not the, this is not the expectations of all women. Some of you are so rebellious. Some of you are so, I mean, you've left your gender. You've left everything and now... You don't know what, you're so confused in your own self. But this young lady, she understood what she was supposed to do in life, and that was to be a wife. She wanted to be a wife and bear children, have one, even a nursing mother, before her children. A man has no problem providing for that. No, he has no problem at all providing for the one who would suckle and nurse his children and be that, not just his peace for just being a servant, but... Having peace. When a man says, I want you as peace. I'm getting off the subject a little bit. What he means is that he don't want no beef with you. He don't want you going out to different places or, you know, just because you have fallen out of love or you no, no longer want to be committed to him. You're not his peace anymore. You're, he's not your peace because your peace has been disturbed because Satan has spoken in your mind, in your marriage. And told you, wouldn't it be better if you go with this guy? Look, he has much money, and he has a little, he has a nice job. Oh, he's so handsome. Yes, and he speaks so smooth. Look at your husband. Yeah. You did all this for him, and look, look, look. All he does is go to work and come back. He does nothing. And he's deceived you. And let's just concede what it does. This is a true statement, though. It brings forth sin. When sin is finished. This brings forth death. Now you were drawn. You this lust was created in you. At one time, you never even thought the second thought to even think of playing off on your husband. And I can say the same thing for the man, but I'm talking to the women. Yes, but the fact is, is that she wanted to be that peace, giving you a definition for that man that he should stay, stay secure in her love. And then it's up to you, man, that the woman stay secure. And your love. Yes, your commitment. Yes, your provisions that you give her. She should not have to worry about stuff. Unless there come a time of war or a time of uh, jobs are scarce. And th these are different. This is a whole different scenario. Why times are good when it's time to do these things is what I'm saying. Sure, there's going to be calamity and people are going to lose jobs. People are going to die. People are going to have war. And there's... The, Oh, there's just so much stuff. But are you committed in the time that you have with that person? Regardless of what happens or what comes about. Even if he has or she has nothing. That even if you both have to stay on the streets. That's you. That's your commitment toward each other. You are a family. Now. And verse 38. And he said, go, and he sent her away two months, and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto a father who did with her according to his vow, and he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was the custom as it was the custom in Israel. A custom, not of God, but because of this. And the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, Four days in a year. It was a sad story. Yes, very sad. But the fact is, God did deliver Israel using a bastard, one who did not have a mother, whose mother was a harlot, was not betrothed or married to 
his father and the children looked on him with disdain and hated him because they were self-righteous in that sense. And with that, they wanted to, he wanted to rule and he showed he could. God gave him rule over Israel. And now, Jephthah is, he, he, he's, he lays and he is a king in Israel and his daughter is remembered forever with those who know her story. And with that, we're going to say, we'll be in chapter 12. Peace. Walk with me.